Let's study how to compute lambda sieve 78 derivatives with suffix trees. Our setting is that we have a text t of length n and we want to compute the factorization of t. Factorizations like the lambda sieve 77, 78 or the Lutten factorization. The goal is that you want to compute a factorization in linear time. And in the substring compression model, we have given the text and we can preprocess it in a preprocessing step. We build an index on it and then at query time, given an interval, we want just to compute the factorization of that specific substring. And the goal is that the query time should be linear in the output size, so it should be output sensitive. And for the indexing part, we restrict to linear time optimally. So why do we want to have linear indexing time? Because otherwise, if we don't care about the indexing time at all, the trivial solution would be just to index all possible solutions. So meaning that you compute the factorization of each possible substring, and there are quadratic many, you put this factorization in the lookup table and you query the lookup table at query time, which costs you constant time, ideally. But however, this index costs you quadratic space and also therefore quadratic time. People have looked at that substring factorization problem in with respect to lambda sieve 77 and Lunden factorization and lambda sieve 78. And you can see that the construction time and query times are already quite compelling. You can see that um, it's not still optimal in that respect that you want to have here linear time and here linear in Z where Z is the number of the respective factors you get for the respective factorization. Here in this talk we look at two derivatives of lambda sieve 78, LZD and LZMW, and we show that we can compute both factorizations in that model in the optimal time. So what are these derivatives? They're called lambda sieve double and lambda sieve miller wittmann But why do we care about these factorizations? The main problem is for LZ78, the lower bound is not so compelling. It's just a square root of, log of n. In contrast, for AZD and AZMW, we get a logarithmic lower bound. So this is actually as good as you can achieve with a grammar. What about these lower bounds? You get them if you just look at the text of A's and you want to factorize this text. What you do is, for a lambda sieve 78, you start from left and you see that whenever you compute a factor, you increase the factor length by 1. And you continue. And you see, if you sum up the lengths of the factors and you want to get n, then z has to be, so the number of factors, um, bounded by square root of n. Now for lambda sieve double, the main idea is that while here you're restricted to refer to a former factor and a character, you can interchange an lzw as you like. So you can refer to two factors or you can just refer to two characters. So we start here for LZD, just referring to two characters. This gives you already the first factor. And then you can see that you can refer to the first factor twice. So you double the length and you can keep on that. So you can again double the next previous factor. You come to a length of eight. And if you do the math, you get uh, logarithmic time, uh, log logarithmic number of factors. For LZMW, you can do the same, but the game is now that you either refer to one character or you refer to two previous consecutive factors. So here it's A and again A, but then you can refer to these previous two AA you just write uh, the last factor number. Do it here again, you have three a's, but also here three a's, so it's uh, three, and then four. And you see that you increase like the Fibonacci numbers. But for the Fibonacci numbers, you know, they grow exponentially, and therefore uh, num the number of factors is also bounded logarithmically. Here is a short definition of LZT, and the main gist is that you first extend the left element as far as possible and then you take care of the right uh, the second one and extend it 
prettily as far as possible. So example here again, start with AB and then you see that you can refer to AB and append the B but you cannot do any better or longer and then you look at this one here and you see that uh, you have AB here again and ABB here but you cannot do anything better brutally. And this gives you the LZT factorization of this text which we use as a running example. For LZMW we have seen that we have to refer to former consecutive factors which is kind of restrictive but the coding is very succinct. Here's an example where we start again from left, we find the A, the B, and then we can already refer to AB just by writing down two. Then we have here BAB, which appears again here consecutively in two factors, so it's three, and so on. For the computation of LZD and LZMW, we have two references, we looked at that theoretically. But you can see that from the time bounds, they are not compelling if you look at integer alphabets. So sigma, the alphabet size is not, co it's not constant and this is not uh, linear time. And this is just expected time. So if you want to look at deterministic time bounds, it's also not so compelling. <coughs> so here we present an uh, algorithm that works in linear time and space. But we can do that not only in, by computing the whole factorization, but if you want to compute the substring compression, then we can actually use that algorithm for the problem, which gives you order of n time for the indexing and the optimal time for the query. And the tool is that we use the suffix tree and uh, weighted ancestor query data structure which means that given any node you want to query an ancestor whose string depth is any value d where string depth d means that if you read from top of the root downwards the letters up to the node then the number of these letters is exactly d and then we need a lowest mark ancestor data structure uh, which means that you can mark any suffix tree node and given any node, you want to get the lowest marked ancestor of this node. And the nice thing is that all these queries can be answered in constant time, and these data structures can all be built in linear time. But now the question is, how can we make use of that for the LZT factorization? So given this example suffix tree of our rounding example, you can see that here we have the suffix numbers of each leaf marked in blue and underlined. We have the nodes labeled by the prior numbers. And we start at the first suffix, meaning we start processing the first factor which starts at position 1. And therefore we take this leaf and we start here our factorization. What we do is that we first mark the root because it represents an empty factor which, which tells us that we have to take a character and we cannot refer to a previous factor. So what we do is now that we want to compute the first factor uh, which consists of a pair EL and ER and we determine the contents of EL and ER. The idea is that we do a uh, lowest mark ancestor query at the leaf lambda 1, which is the left position. And we find just the root, which tells us that EL has to be a character. And the next leaf, lambda 2, therefore is at position 2. And we do the same query, find again the root, which gives us the information that the first factor is just A and B as length 2. And this information we store in the suffix tree by marking the locus of the first factor AB, which is this node number three, and we store it there. Um, it has to refer to the first factor. And we're done with the first factor. The next factor starts at position three, we know that. So we jump to this leaf. This is now lambda one. 
we query with the Lewis Marquensis data structure, find here that we can refer to the first factor. Um, first factor is length 2, so we take the second leaf at position 5, we go to position 5, do again the marked ancestor query, we find the root, which tells us the next ER is just to store um, a character, the, the length of the second factor is 3, so we mark in the suffix tree now the second factor, um, the locus of it, ABA, ABB, this is node number 7, we store it there, it has to refer to the second factor. Finally, for the third factor, which starts now at position 6, we jump there, we do again the same query, we end up again at uh, node number 3, so we refer to factor 1. Um, go to two positions ahead, which is at position 8 for the second leaf, lambda 2. Query again here, we find um, the node 3 is marked for referring to uh, the second factor. So we want now to locate the locus of the third factor, which has length 5. And we end up here in the middle of an edge, so this gives us not a node. Um, but we are not doomed, we just say this is an implicit locus and the actual locus is the next node we visit downwards and we mark this node but also store in this node additionally that it corresponds to the third factor, the length of this factor, such that when we do the next lowest mark ancestor query we find not only the node that is marked and the factor it corresponds to, but also the length of this factor and that so far we can reconstruct how long the next factor we want to compute has to be. So what we get as time complexities is that for processing a factor we did several steps. So first one is we take the leaf lambda 1 which corresponds to starting position of this factor, so meaning that it's Suffix number is the starting position of this factor. Then we compute a lowest marked ancestor to query for the reference, uh, which gives us a node B1. And given that its length is L1, we take the leaf lambda 2 at the next position, just jumping L1 positions ahead, and query again here for the lowest marked ancestor for the second possible reference. And summing up both lengths gives us the length of our factor. But if one of these nodes refers not to our not explicit nodes, so they are implicit nodes, then they have to store the length of the factor we want to refer. And instead of using the string length, we use the stored length. And if you see that um, all these steps used some kind of data structure which takes constant query time, we can see that all these steps here can be processed in constant time. And because we have that many factors to process, we get C, log, uh, C total time. And for Lapusif, Miller, Wegman, it's pretty similar. So main idea is that instead of uh, that you store the locus of the x factor, you store the locus of uh, the x minus 1 factor prepended. So you uh, use that as the locus you mark in the suffix tree. And because you do that, the nice thing is that you don't care about the second leaf or the second ancestors. You don't need them, you just query once for each factor for the last mark ancestor. So in summary what we have seen is that we can compute uh, the LZD and the LZMW factorization in linear time. And the computation model was that n is the uh, length of the input and the alphabet can be integer, so it's independent of the alphabet size as long as it's integer alphabet. And we use the word RAM model. For the substring compression, you just build the same data structures, but keeps them in memory, and whenever a query comes, you can see 
you can answer such a query and set time where set is the number of factors to output. So thank you for listening and any questions are welcome.